What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're going to chapter 42, page 917, and we're gonna be talking all about high flow nasal cannulas. Get your egans out and let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about high flow nasal cannula systems in this video. Before we dive into that, uh, real quick here, if you will, I want you to uh, tell you about the Respiratory Coach Academy. Uh, you can find more information at this at respiratorycoach.com where you'll find resources to help prepare you for your TMC, your CSE, and then just many courses to help you with all of the difficult uh, subjects that come up like, like uh, ABGs, pharmacology, uh, neonatal care, all of those type of, of, of just difficult concepts. And uh, it's all there just to make uh, your road and your journey to RRT just a little easier. So go check that out if you will. And now let's talk about high flow nasal cannula. When you look at these systems, um, and, and before we get into the settings, let's clarify first that we have to acknowledge what we're talking about here. So when we say high flow nasal cannula system, we're talking about specifically two different really main versions uh, out there, one being the Vapotherm uh, version, and then the other one is the Fisher & Paykel OptiFlow. Uh, these devices allow for, for, for oxygen to be delivered to your patient at very high flows, up to 60 liters per minute. And by chance, by the time you watch this, they may be up to 70 liters per minute. But either way, we're talking about higher flows. We're not just talking about a regular nasal cannula that delivers eight liters per minute, or even the Salter nasal cannula that delivers 15 liters per minute. That is not what we're talking about here. And, and, and this takes us back to understanding low flow versus high flow oxygen systems. We know that traditional nasal cannulas are a low flow device, meaning you, you, you set a flow and you really have really no idea exactly how much oxygen your patient's getting. You can estimate, but we don't really know. And so that's what makes these different is because the first setting that you will find when you look at one of these devices is an actual FiO2 setting. And so you can, you can dial that FiO2 in for your patient based off of their needs. Uh, you also will dial in a flow. So this is, what is the concentration of oxygen you want to deliver to your patient? This is how quickly do you want that flow to be delivered to your patient? Obviously 60 liters per minute is gonna be significantly higher flow than 30 liters per minute. Or if we think about a traditional nasal cannula and we're talking about where you may have patients on three or four liters per minute, you can tell we're delivering this flow much quicker. And that's important because that's what makes it a high flow device. Remember, high flow device, the delivery of an FiO2 that is fixed or precise, it does not vary because the flow from the device exceeds the patient's inspiratory flow, hence high flow nasal cannula. We now have a nasal cannula that can exceed the patient's inspiratory flow, making it a device that can deliver a fixed FiO2. Egan talks about this. It says, um, the ability to maintain a consistent FiO2 under varying breathing patterns makes these devices suitable alternatives for early intervention in critically ill patients. That's, that's what this was saying. When, when, when are you going to think about these devices? Anytime you're working with an acutely or critically ill patient and you're looking for, can we keep this patient off of mechanical ventilation? Or perhaps you just extubated them and you're, now you're saying, can we prevent having to re-intubate these patients? When we think about how can we how can we reduce the escalation of care instead of going to a non-invasive uh, ventilation or maybe intubate and mechanically ventilate, we find a high flow nasal cannula is finding a place in that space. And so uh, we're going to set an FiO2, we're going to set a flow, and then there's a temperature setting. And the temperature setting is important because the it's we don't want to deliver cold, dry air to our patients, especially at flows of 30, 40, 50, 60 liters per minute. Uh, we know that that has negative effects on the mucociliary escalator, and we don't want that. So we need to warm this air and humidify this gas that we're delivering to our patients, delivering a set FiO2 at a set flow, optimally prepared to, 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 to deliver it so that um, we get uh, effective gas exchange 
and, and keep mucus moving. Now, when we talk about the benefits of high flow nasal cannula, there's several. There's several benefits to this, so let's just go through here and list some of these benefits. Number one, we're allowed to deliver a fixed FiO2, and I already said that. It's one of the settings, but that is truly a benefit of this, is you can, you can deliver high FiO2s and ensure that your patient is receiving those 70, 80, 90, 100 percent oxygen, and your patient receives it. That's one benefit. The next benefit is that because of these higher flow levels, we actually find that they actually generate some levels of PEEP. And so it's estimated that about for every one uh, or every 10 liters per minute of flow, you're going to generate about one centimeters of water pressure of PEEP. So what does that mean? That basically means this. If you're on 30 liters per minute, you're generating about three centimeters of water pressure of PEEP. 40 would be 4, 55, 66 centimeters of water pressure of PEEP. We see where we know that PEEP is valuable in helping us oxygenate our patient. And now we have a system here that will generate at least small levels of PEEP uh, that's going to help with gas exchange and improve the oxygenation status of our patients. We also see that this flow that's happening is going to help in washing out um, the dead space or anatomical dead space. This is going to help to reduce carbon dioxide levels and that's a key element because when you think about this device you likely think of it as a tool used to improve oxygenation and if you say that I'd say yeah that's, that's true it is a very effective oxygenator. Uh, but this, this, this washing out of anatomical dead space has shown to help improve gas exchange, not just in improving oxygenation, but also reducing carbon dioxide, uh, specifically for our patients um, that are in for acute hypercapnic respiratory failure, our COPD patients who have that rising CO2. Uh, during that exacerbation, this device may can help reduce that with and through the means of uh, anatomical dead space washout of that CO2. Now, this next one here, uh, we talk about mobilizing mucus, and that's important because anytime you have patients in the hospital uh, with any type of pulmonary injury or disorder, increased mucus production is typically uh, going to be associated with that. Now, what we don't want is that mucus to become dry and sticky. We need the, the anatomical structures, the mucociliary escalator. To, to, to function normally, to help move those secretions up and out of the airways, and then hopefully our patients can effectively cough and clear them, okay? Now, if this gas is not warmed, heated, and humidified, then it becomes very difficult for those, that mucus to be uh, able to be mobilized. And so this, uh, through the temperature, the heating and the humidifying of this gas to, um, to an optimal relative humidity, we find that it benefits our patients through the mobilization of mucus. And then the last one here is kind of just a little bonus. Uh, the comfort features of this device, the high flow nasal cannula system, uh, is, is good. The, the, they're more comfortable. And what we know is that if your devices and the therapy that you're, you're utilizing with your patients if it's more comfortable, then it's more likely to be better tolerated. And if it's better tolerated, then compliance with the therapy is more likely than if it is uncomfortable. And so your patients are, are, are hopefully going to go, hey, yeah, I, I, you need some oxygen. I'm going to put this mask on you. And they're, they're ripping it off. They're like, I can't wear it. I'm claustrophobic. I, I can't wear that mask. Versus this device where it's just a nasal prong that fits right inside the nares and then uh, around the back of the head, it, it shows that it is more comfortable or at least a, a, an alternative device in regards to comfort that you now have an option to utilize when, when needed. You gotta know when to and when not to consider high flow nasal cannula. Uh, we make it sound real good and they are real good, but it's not for every patient. There is no one tool out there that is always for every single patient. So you, as a clinician, have to realize when high flow nasal cannula is appropriate or not, depending on the presentation of your patient. Remember that FIO2 and flow are not the same. And so if, you, if your patient needs more oxygen and they're on this device, then no, you need to increase the FIO2. If, 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 if their oxygen is, is, is acceptable, 
but they look like they, they, they maybe are in a little bit of distress, then maybe they need more flow. So remember, they're not the same. And then um, always ongoing assessment is required to make sure that your patient is, is indeed getting better and not worse. So when we think about this device and its, it's promise and, and, and the research that's going into looking at how it affects intubation rates and, and re-intubation rates, we realize that this is not, just like everything else we do, never is it just, oh, put them on a high flow nasal cannula and I don't have to worry about them. Uh, we still have to monitor these patients. We still need to be, be monitoring the respiratory rate. Um, the ROCS index is a valuable tool that can help you objectively uh, quantify your patient's uh, uh, improvement or deterioration and maybe pointing to, hey, we gave this a shot, but it's not working anymore. Patient's getting worse, and I can see it because of this. That's actually what I'm going to talk about in my next video. So be sure and keep your um, eyes open for that. That is the High Flow Nasal Cannula. I'm Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor, stay here right here on YouTube for me. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button um, and uh, leave me a comment and, a, and hit the like button for me, please. Instagram, TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. Visit the website, respiratorycoach.com. Remember, at the end of the day, every single day, average is easy, don't be it.